Hey guys, we're back with another carving video. I think I have a really fun and cool carve lined up for today. So I have all these customs coming in for the holidays and I just had a custom come in to carve a life-size Shih Tzu. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce the name of the breed. I apologize greatly if that's incorrect, but it's sort of like a Maltese. So it's a small, fluffy, adorable white dog. So that is what we're carving today. It's gonna be probably like a three-day project, probably a 15-minute video for you. But with that said, let's get carving. Okay, let's go. I actually just came back from eating some lunch. I had a lasagna, but we're back over to our pup. Let me turn you guys around. He actually is shaping up surprisingly fast and well. I'm gonna bring this little shoulder hump down a little bit more and he was just big enough that I was able to hollow this out. I just need to get all this sawdust out now. Um, I love when I'm able to do this. I think it just kind of adds, I don't know, extraness to it. <laughs> but um, still have a lot of detailing to do on the face. I don't know if I'm gonna do his mouth open yet or not. Um, and then you can see here is his tail over on that side. <sighs> Always noises, never a quiet day here. <laughs> But let's continue. hard to see because the wood is so hairy but we just kind of hollowed some eye spots out and we just made some definition between the upper and lower jaw 
and this is where I'm gonna try to put a little tongue. So I think we're ready to move on to the angle grinder to try to smooth him out and just kind of further shape some detail into his face. So let's go grab that and we'll go from there. just marked where I want his little nose and roughly where his eyes are going so I'm gonna take the angle grinder and just kind of shape the nose and then we'll probably grab the Dremel to do the eyes and the tongue and then we'll go ahead and texture his body I'm just gonna go grab the Dremel and I'll be right back. So let's see if you can see this. So this is the bit I just put on. It's round and sharp and spins and this is how we're gonna make eyes and tongues, okay? We have about maybe an hour left of sunlight. So we're gonna try to get our texturing done so that way we can kind of wrap him up tomorrow. I kind of already drew arrows. I like to do this. It kind of just reminds me and keeps me um, pulling the hair in the same way on both sides, keeps it nice and symmetrical. We're gonna do some long pulls down the ears um, and then we'll try to fluff up this area here. And then just before we start, I'm gonna check to see um, what their tails usually look like. I know they're kind of puffy. So we'll try to mimic that there. He has his little toe beans. So he's ready for some texture. So let's go. are all textured now. I know he looks so fuzzy because we still need to torch him to kind of burn all of this extra stuff off. But I'm pretty happy with him so far. I definitely have a case of noodle arms from working all day. So we're gonna call it at that. And we have some fun stuff to do tomorrow. So I'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning. So we have a really fun day today. We get to stain our little pup here and make him look like the dog we're trying to make him look like. But before we start all the fun stuff like torching and the painting and yada yada, I'm gonna grab the angle grinder and we're just gonna smooth his base out. You can see that there's just several overcuts that I made with the chainsaw. We're gonna just try to soften some of those 
um, clean up the base, get rid of all this, uh, I forget what this layer is called, but it's what's underneath the bark. So we're gonna get rid of all of that. And um, yeah, so we'll just speed through that and then we'll jump right into the fun stuff. So real quick, this right here is a picture of the handsome man that we are trying to recreate. Okay, so you can see his body's mostly white with a couple of gray accents. So now we're gonna walk down here quick. So this is a big cardinal I carved a while ago. Do you see how there's like a lot of texture here? I actually painted this entire cardinal black and then I followed up with a red coat. So you can still see some of the black layering. So that is what we're gonna do with our dog here but instead of black, we're gonna do kind of a, like a whitish gray. And then we're gonna follow up with a bright white coat. And I think that's just gonna help us add some texture. Again, kind of like how this bear has texture here. It's not just like one color, right? It's not one flat color. You have the char underneath the stain, but since we're painting him, we're not gonna be able to see any of this char. And we just added all this beautiful texture and we just wanna be able to see that. So I hope that makes sense. And if it doesn't, I think you'll understand when, um, when we start painting him. So I'm gonna go mix up some gray cause I only have white and black and then we'll cover his whole body, let it dry. And then we'll follow up with a white coat. And then we'll start doing like the little detailing, like his nose, his ears, adding the little gray pops, some little, some little toe beans and stuff like that. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this with this lighting, but I mixed up just a very light gray. You can see there's the white, here's the gray, kind of in my trusty McDonald's cup. <laughs> so just enough to make it so you can still see some of that texture, but still appears white. It's almost like this is like a white shadow, if that makes sense. So let me set you up on the tripod and we're just gonna coat his whole body in this. Um, actually, I might water this down a little bit. We're gonna go do that. And then I'll set you guys up and we'll get started. I just reached out to the lady and I sent her these. She said that the people this pup is for are New York Giants fans. So therefore reds and blues and whites. And then she also said um, they like purple. So I included this little periwinkle light purple. So when she lets me know which one of these she wants or if she doesn't like any of these, we'll go from there. But um, this will be the base color once we know which one. But I'm gonna sit you up on the tripod and we're gonna keep painting because he's pretty dry now.
just got back to me and she thinks one is the winner. So one's the winner. Guys, it's been it's been like a week and a half to two weeks since we last talked so the owner's actually coming to pick up the puppy I think she said Saturday so I just wanted to show him off because he's been done there's a couple things I did off camera so I'll show you those but I didn't want to lose my opportunity to show you guys the finished product before he went to his new home so let me show you him da, 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 da. he's so cute ah oh. So uh, the owner wanted me to remove um, about, I think it was an inch and a half off the base. So I did that off camera just for shipping purposes, which I totally understand. I was totally in agreement with her. So we removed some of that. Um, I painted his eyes brown. I don't know if I showed that or not, um, but yeah. So again, this puppy is being shipped down to Florida. So the person that purchased him is not going to be the owner owner. It's going to be for one of her close friends in Florida. But I'm really happy with how he came out and I'm really excited for her to see him. I sent her a picture and she, she really liked him, but carvings, pictures just don't do them justice. <sighs> it really doesn't. So I hope this little video did him justice. He's a cutie and I hope he represents the puppy that has passed well and I hope that he makes his new owners in Florida very happy. But yeah, till next time guys, bye.